Well, as we mentioned earlier, the U.S. Supreme Court saved President Obama's controversial health care law. The high court ruled that millions of Americans who are in states with federally run exchanges like Wisconsin can keep their tax credits that help them pay for their health insurance. Ryan Owens is an assistant professor of political science at UW-Madison and an expert on the U.S. Supreme Court. Welcome back. Good, Good to see you. Thank you very you. much. Thank you. So for Wisconsin residents who participate in online exchanges, it's status quo. That's right. Yep. Uh, what this court decision does is it provides them the subsidies they thought they were going to get uh, when they signed up for the legislation, um, or for the insurance coverage, I should say. Um, and it really clarifies the existing state of the law on this matter. Mm -hmm. So this is going to remain, this is the law of the land. I, mean, I, I think this... that's right. I, I, I think. As you might recall, as, as most viewers will recall, uh, you know, this legislation was sort of rammed through at the last minute uh, by Congress. Uh, and as a consequence of that, uh, and as a consequence of its complexity, I think there are going to be many ambiguities with this bill. Um, this is not going to be the last one. But in terms of the, the major sort of uh, status of this bill, is it permissible under the law? I think this ruling on top of the previous one really solidifies the fact that it is going to stick around in one form or another um, for a long time. Well, reaction to it sort of fell along party lines. Democrats were supportive and most Republicans mm -hmm. say that they will still <coughs> try to repeal it. That's right. Do, is that a possibility? Or at least as far as the courts are concerned? Yeah, it, I, you know, uh, as far as the political dynamics go, I think if Republicans win uh, the next presidential election, uh, you know, it's up in the air. It's possible that, that they could change it. Uh, of course, they would have to agree on, on an alternative, and mm -hmm. that's, of course, nothing um, solid. But at least uh, in the legal grounds, I think uh, this case really, I think, put the icing on the cake for, uh, at least for the Obama administration. And Chief Justice Robert wrote the opinion on the second time now that he's that's right. went against the conservatives and, yeah. and stood up for Obamacare. What does that tell you? Well, it, it, it tells me two things. One is he may be the squishy conservative that a lot of people thought he was uh, at first. But I think it, it, what it also suggests, or, or <coughs> highlights at least, is that as Chief Justice he has concerns that go beyond uh, ideology, right? He has concerns about the, the institution of the court. And in the, in the previous case and in this one, I think he wanted to establish judicial humility. Uh, I think he didn't want to put the court in the crosshairs of the political branches. And I think that largely explains his behavior. Now, other people have said that this may be a function of his ties to business. And, you know, and business didn't want this thing to be undone. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with that completely. I think it was more of the institutional angle. We're expecting another big decision either Friday or Monday on whether same-sex couples have a constitutional right to marry. That's right. Does this... Uh, decision give us any insight into how the justices might rule on that case? Right. I, I don't think so. Uh, it's always, of course, hard to read the tea leaves, but w one of the things that this decision does is if you actually look back at who authored the court's majority opinions over the last few weeks or so, um, the court has a norm of equity. Uh, they want justices to write about the same number of opinions as one another. And so if you have some justices who are writing a lot of opinions and some who have written few, you can kind of figure out, okay, in the next couple of days we know who's going to be writing these opinions. And uh, I did the math on it this morning and it looks like Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Anthony Kennedy are the two who still have some opinions to make up. Um, so it shouldn't be a shock that Anthony Kennedy or Ruth Bader Ginsburg would be the majority opinion author in the same-sex marriage case. Um, but you know, that'll tell us something. I mean, it's not Roberts, it's not Scalia, um, so this could be something interesting. Next couple of days we'll find out for sure. That's right. Ryan, thanks for being with us. Great to see you, Ryan. Thank you very much. Thank you.